Hindus hope that one day they'll get to visit the holy river Ganges. Muslims hope once in a lifetime to visit Makkah. Jews express the wish that they might meet next year in Jerusalem. And some Christians also go on pilgrimage to Rome, Canterbury, and of course to Walsingham here in Norfolk. Other Christians, though, think it's all a lot of superstition. Tonight, we're not talking about Christianity so much as finding out what members of three of the other great world faiths really believe. With me are the Sikh writer and broadcaster Indajit Singh, the Hindu monk and teacher Swami Bhavanyanda, and to give the Jewish viewpoint, Rabbi Lionel Bloom. If I could begin with you though, Indajit, for you, is going on pilgrimage something rather like so superstition? I think very much so. The gurus came on the scene in India about 500 years ago where ritual, that is pilgrimages, penances, uh, fasting, uh, these things were taken as religion itself, whereas the Sikh view is that they may be an aid to religion. The Sikh state, Guru Nanak states, that um, for him, being immersed in meditation on God is the equivalent of a pilgrimage to um, Benares or immersion or bathing in the Gandhis. He was saying that to an extent these are superstitious practices. The real practice is, is constant immersion in the uh, name and meditation of God. Swami, you disagree with that perhaps because for you going, I mean bathing in the river Ganges is a, a, a key experience. No, I agree with him in a sense because contemplation and meditation bringing God into our life as frequently as possible that's of course the highest and the best but our family situation the, social, the situation the society where I live is not that uh, ideal so I would like to take off from the family situation uh, as an individual or as a family unit and go to these special places of pilgrimage because there these places of pilgrimage are associated with saints, with God-men, and so as a result, going to a place of pilgrimage, there's spe you expose yourself to special vibrations there, and they do help us in a positive way. And coming to live in the West, I have gone to all the places of pilgrimage you have mentioned in this, and in every one of those places, there is a special vibration. You do feel that some places are more holy than others? Not, not the places. The places are holy because some holy men have lived there. And, and they have contributed a positive vibration to that atmosphere. And by myself exposing to it, and I stand to benefit. Lionel, for the yeah. Jew, that saying next year in Jerusalem, is Jerusalem a holy place or is it a sense of something like being Jewish, that you know, it, it's your capital city? No, I think it's a place where holy things have happened and it's had different importance in different times of Jewish history. I mean, I personally like package holidays and, and I like religion and anything which combines them po both, as far as I'm concerned, is quite lovely, you see. And uh, I felt great sympathy with a whole coach load of Catholic ladies I met who were going to um, a Catholic pilgrimage centre and they were going for a cream tea and they were going to have their holy water blessed and they were going to um, find a priest, you know, and I, I liked the whole the whole combination of friendliness and good nature with, uh, you know, the bit of religion thrown in. But I have to say for myself that the kind of pilgrimages I go on are somewhat different, you know, from the fixed ones. I like to go on pilgrimages to places which have been important to me in my life and usually homes that I've once lived in. So sometimes I make a pilgrimage back to the old east end of London because I want to see the little street I used to live in and I sometimes sit back for about half an hour on the pavement, you know, just watching it and trying to make sense of that period of my life because I think God has something to say to me in that place. And I think it's a good thing to go on your private pilgrimages to the places which have meant something to you. Indichit, despite what you were saying, yeah. for Sikhs, going to Amritsar, your, your holy city as it were, isn't a key experience. It is. It's um, put in the context of the Guru's teachings that it is not the immersion. There is a very nice man-made lake at Amritsar around the temple and Sikhs do go and take a dip in there. But um, it is not in itself any aid to holiness. It is going to a holy place and uh, 
learning something about the history and culture and the teachings and uh, the place where the gurus lived and taught. It is that. It is a center of Sikhism and it's nice to go to the center and origin of the religion. It's just sort of, in a way, a pilgrimage. The whole idea is encouraging us to live in the past. Well, it's got one great danger attached to it because you think uh, that you go there because you feel that, that God is there. You see, but then there comes the the temptation to feel that God can only be there, and that you've got to possess the place or conquer it or grab it, because in that way you can, you can, as it were, get the freehold of God Almighty Himself. You see, and and that is rather dangerous when you translate pilgrimage into political terms. And I think all religions have had that problem. You know, from the Christian Crusades, it's affected Jews, Muslims, and every other and every other group. Do you think those religious people who don't normally go on a pilgrimage or even think it's unnecessary are missing out? I don't think they miss out anything at all. Uh, if they are uh, so much aware of God's presence, or they're quite happy to. Ultimately, God has to be re realized in one's own self. That when, if they are convinced of it and are able to do it, all other things are not necessary. As I said earlier, it helps. One if I have this positive move, see, I even have gone to Amritsar. I went to Jerusalem, I went to uh, <laughs> Bethlehem. Uh, when I go there, I do feel there is a very positive uh, vibration, it helps. The real religious journey is not in geography, it's in, in inside yourself. Very much, that very is the teaching, yes. On that note of complete agreement, then, I thought we were going to disagree <laughs> on this subject, but on that note of agreement, thank you all very, very much indeed for this thank conversation. You. Thank you.